Hi everyone out in Facebook land. Welcome to a, a Monday, a Monday night. I know already um, with artfully connected uh, with Cindy Harrison and the guest tonight is Deb Antonick. Hi. <laughs> So we're going to be talking about Deb's um, artful journey and how she got from point A to where she is today. B plus. B plus. Yeah, there you go. And um, but I just want to thank everyone who's joining us tonight. I, I mean, it was a long weekend and today it was one of those weird, weird days in, in the U.S. where some people had it off and some people didn't. So it's like I half worked and I half didn't, <laughs> <laughs> but that's a story of my life. That's most days for me these days. So, um, but thank you for joining us tonight. And if you have any questions for Deb, feel free to put them in the comments and I will answer them, um, uh, not answer them. I will ask her and she <laughs> will answer them for you. And um, if you're watching on the replay, thank you for taking the time out and watching this this awesome interview. And again, if you have questions, you are also allowed to put them in the comment section, but put a little at sign in front of Deb's name so that she'll pop up and know that she has a question, she'll be notified so that she can answer it for you. Um, so I know we're a little bit behind, uh, starting a little bit late, but hey, so welcome Deb to Thank my you. group. Thanks, <laughs> pretty excited. <laughs> It, it is pretty exciting. It's exciting. Great, yes. great way to start off the month of July. <laughs> right? With a toasty, hot, smoky day. Well, and, and you're, I'm, I'm kind of on the cold side, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, it's still good, right? It's all good. I, I know some of uh, the northern North American continent has been really, really, yeah. really hot. <laughs> Oh, we, we, we were the hottest in, in the land. And then five hours from me, a whole town burnt down. So that's oh, how hot it was. Oh, no. how hot did <laughs> it get? 121 Fahrenheit. 121 Fahrenheit. Oh, yeah. my. it was, it's, it's about I have four or five hour drive from here. And a train went through town with flames underneath, apparently, and poof, the whole town went down. Small town, but still, you know, it's Canada's hot spot, but we've been up in the hundreds. Oh, under finish oh. today is a little reprieve because it's smoky and it's blocking the sun and yeah but that that's just that is just horrible it is yeah i can't even imagine we were over on the west coast and although i know tacoma you know portland area yeah. that they were in the hundreds over over the hundreds yeah they're kind of in the same you know umbrella as we are with with all that yeah we were at crescent the highest we went was crescent city california and above Eureka and all the way down to San Francisco. So that whole section there, I don't think it got more than low 90s, but it at night it was like 57. Every the morning I'd wake up as like 57, 57 yeah. every day. So it was really comfortable. Actually on the chilly side. So. We ordered, we had to order air conditioning. I can't do this anymore. I couldn't even paint. I was painting like an amateur with the dried floats and oh I believe I like, it. No, I believe it. Can't do it. So so 86 where Julie speaks is from mm -hmm. so that's 86 is nice. That's not bad. Um, but thank you all for being here. And I'm going to just go right into these questions. Deb. Hit me. <laughs> the first I live alone. I have no one to talk to. So hit me. <laughs> no, anyway. <laughs> so the first one is tell us where you're from. I live in, of course, I'm Canadian, uh, beautiful British Columbia, a uh, small town called Penticton. It's a small beach town. It's, uh, they've tried very hard to carry on, you know, the old 50s, 60s, 70s, sort of the beach thing. We have, uh, we're one of, I think one are only two or three places in the world or in Canada that have a beach, have a lake at either end of the, of the city. So just within a few miles, I mean, if you hit the other lake, you've gone too far You turn around beach to beach. And it's, it's, we're very much a tourist town and we're also known for our wine. And of course I don't drink, which is such a disappointment, but um, we're wineries and beaches. It's very nice, very toasty. That's cool. Yeah. A winery and beaches, what a, a great combination, right? 
Yeah. <laughs> they originally. Well, you know, and, and Deb, I just came from Napa Valley. Oh, yes, yeah, so you get it. I don't drink. So. No, and they look at you like you're foreign. It's like, what do you yeah, mean? Yeah, and, and, and it's almost like a challenge to them. It is. It's like the minute I say I didn't drink, and my husband just paid for two wine pairing, you know, wine tastings. Yeah. And like, what? And I said I'll try it, but I don't. I don't drink. I'm the designated. It's just never acquired the taste for it. Give me the bubbly <laughs> stuff, and then yeah. Yeah, but not. but a couple of them it became a challenge, and they had to go find a wine, not one of the ones they were gonna pour out, but they have to go yeah. find a wine in the in the back to that they they're gonna make sure I like something, you know, and I'm like. Whatever. The only one that's ever got me to sit there and drink enough wine to, to get shushed by Tracy Moreau is Holly Hanley. <laughs> <laughs> There's a story with that, but yeah, we, we, she, we got a, a angry beaver or something was this wine and, and uh, we were challenged. She says, Oh, here, have a bit. So I'd get the little sip, but then she kept filling my glass and then we got loud and we got shushed in class. Oh, I know. So I'm not allowed to drink. <laughs> Shame on you. <laughs> I know. Right. So I did spend before that I was Calgary, Alberta for almost 30 years. So and because I don't ski, so that that, you know, another disappointment. But we're back here. This is my child, but we're both my husband and I grew up here. Oh, okay, cool. So so are you talking about your family? Are they mm -hmm. artistic? Did do they have art, you know, are they artistic? Uh, you know, my mom was a number cruncher, so she was very numeric everything in a row everything lined up um my daughter is actually very very talented she's she's very good at writing but i've also seen her sketch and doodle and it's something that i did often too when i worked i was in computers and stuff for years i would do it but it, you don't really know how how it fits into your life until maybe you hit like adulthood or you know at some point so and my grandsons both of them love to do art which is typical with most children but they do quite enjoy it. They love grandma's little studio when they do get here. So hopefully, hopefully I, I keep supplies. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah. So we're a very small family. So you, you did you say you have siblings? I have one brother. He's not artistic. No, no. He's a, actually, he's got a great eye for photography, as does my daughter. I would love to have seen that pursued on both of their parts because both of them are phenomenal. They have, well, I mean, that's, that's an artistic of, talent too, right? Yeah, that's a form yeah. of artistic talent. Yeah, most definitely. It's an amazing eye when she take when they take photographs. So, you know, so, it's so there. when did you discover you liked painting? Well, that kind of you know back in the days of the, the ducks on blue backgrounds, the white ducks, you know, that goes back into what late eighties, early nineties. <laughs> I was working of all places. I always wanted to learn how to paint, but I couldn't do it. I didn't have a clue about it. And I was working at Home Depot and back when the old um, wood strokes magazines used to be out. And of course, because it was a woodworking magazine, Home Depot carried it. So it would be on the shelf and I'd see it. And I was talking to another coworker and she says, oh, I go to this lady's house all the time on, on Monday nights or something. And I paint. And I said, oh, can I do that? So she, she, hooked me up with that. So I went like every Tuesday night for, oh my God, like three years in a row, never missed a night except for when I broke my wrist. And, uh, you know, I did the usual, like everybody else, you go home and next thing, you know, you gone to Michael's and you've bought a brush and then you've bought four bottles of paint and, you know, you start painting kind of a little chair in the corner and then it's the kitchen table. And then it's the, you know, <laughs> just, just grew from there. And then I started doing craft sales. So I was hooked right from the get go. So early nineties, but I had always loved doing it. Like I'd always wanted to learn. Right. So you were, were you married already and had kids? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. so I, I find that to be um, the case with most artists lately that um, yeah. it usually is something that happens after, after marriage and children. Yeah. You know? Well, it was because my daughter was already in her, in her late teens. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she was already started, had her own life and I was, done with the, the computer, the, the tech jobs that I used to have. And I was just kind of working part time and just kind of enjoying life for a change. Cause I used to do the 6 AM to 11, nine, you know, 11 midnight type thing in the tax industry. So writing tax software. So it was a nice, you know, I had no time for anything. Yep. So it was you time. That's cool. It was me time. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, because when my son was my last, I had three kids, and when my son was graduating, was looking to the end of high school and going off to college, I'm like, oh, I have to do something that's going to keep me, yeah, you know, sane because otherwise, what will I do? So, and who knew it was going to take over the entire house? <laughs> yeah, well, my husband made me keep it at bay, but <laughs> oh, well, I live in 800 square feet, so I I don't have a lot of room, so it's it's usually. <laughs> You have to weed through it. Right, right. Crazy. Mm -hmm. um, so well, who would you say, uh, or, or should I say, which artists or artists influenced you the most? Well, you know, I was always into the whimsy. So when I first started doing the painting, you know, the, the most popular designers at the time were Lori Speltz, Renee Mullins, and Terry French. I had her books. And uh, Debbie Toes long time ago she did sceneries and stuff and so they were sort of the ones that i read go to i was just obsessed mm -hmm. and then i started seeing more and more of terry french's stuff and her stuff really really talked to me it was just the whimsy the the primitive aspects sort of the just the little details but they those were basically all my go-to people cool painted tons of it loved it so when did you become a designer like i know that you have a connection with terry yeah um when did you did you were you a designer before your connection with terry or was it through your connection with terry you became through my connection terry was a was a very interesting person and anybody that knows her um knew that she was also very giving she loved to share and she was actually one of the very first that was doing e-patterns way back in the day in and on um etsy so I found her on Etsy and I started buying her patterns. Of course, I had to buy every one every time she came up with something. And she was having problems getting them put into e-patterns. And of course, I was a techie, so I had all my toys. So I offered to start doing them for her. And then, you know, she liked that because of the turnover was very quickly. And then we started doing a little bit more together. I think she went to Italy sometime during that time. So she kind of left her business in my hands. Like people would get orders and we'd have to physically send the pattern. So she sent, email me the orders and I would send them out. And then one day she was, she loved to draw and just, but she said, I'll never paint all these. And one day she sent out a, 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 just a sketch to myself and uh, Sharon Bond, if you've ever met her and a couple other ladies. And I know Julie Speaks is in here. She did a few as well. And we did, these drawings and she said, I want to create something where you guys paint these, make them your own, paint them, write the patterns, and then they'll go under this painting with friends banner. And it would be a 50, 50, basically a 50, 50 split. And that's how we sort of started this little business. And it just grew from there. We had several, we had, oh, we had a lot of people at, at one time involved in it. And uh, then Terry, unfortunately, she passed away. A lot of people know she had a stroke at 63. So yeah, it was a big loss to the decorative painting industry, but you know, her legacy lives on. Her family generously gave me everything that, you know, all the designs, the, the patterns to, and the copyrights to manage and look after and stuff like that. So I, I keep her little memories alive. And, you know, she was very well respected in the industry. She's this very giving, sharing person. So keep her going. Yes, definitely. Most definitely. But so, she was so inspiring. And so uh, a person that that gave you a lot of encouragement to see the the better in yourself, you know, to 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 go past to, to push yourself that little bit farther. There was no right, there was no wrong. And, and that was really good. It's very difficult to find a lot of people. I mean, you get teachers, but people that give you that encouragement. Right. So when did so, when so you were using, you, she was giving, you know, her drawings, you were coloring them, writing up the instructions. When, when did you transition from using her drawings to doing your own drawings? I, I had sort of started dabbling in it, um, basically about, well, I guess I'd say seven years because we've been in this house for seven years. And she really pushed me. A lot of them were starting to come out as my own because they're her, she used to, she started off sending very um, detailed drawings and then they became literally just scribbles. You know, you, it was up to you to sort of pick out what you saw in there to create a design with. And so I, I started dabbling, but I kept a lot of them kind of close to home, but I really started to branch out after she passed away because I was afraid to paint her designs. I just didn't feel that was right at the time until, you know, down the road when her family 
said, you know, you got to continue this and, and stuff. So I just started playing and getting creative. And then I just kind of took that little step and what happens if I do this and kind of went from there. And then now I just, I just doodle. <laughs> but you find it in yourself. I mean, I guess it was there because I, I was a doodled a lot in school. But we, we squash it. We don't realize that we have it. My thing was, is I didn't ever think you could make money at art. <laughs> well, you, you can't make a lot of money at art, but you can definitely, it's good therapy. <laughs> it keeps it you sane. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. So what have, what have you found is your favorite subject matter? I like, I like, well, like I said, the whimsy, sort of the whimsical aspect of things. Um, that's why I called myself a touch of primsy when I did my books is because it was sort of a, a, a modern take on primitive style and just started adding more whimsy bits. But I like doing angels and girls and, and uh, apparently gnomes. I have a lot of gnomes. <laughs> they started, they just started popping out of my head. It's like, but, I, I don't know if they'll ever stop though. <laughs> <laughs> but they're, you know, there's, there's more in there, but you know, the market's pretty saturated, but I'll throw out another one every once in a while. But, you know, I, I just, I found, I like doing like a lot of like the angels and just things like that. And, and how do you come up with these designs? I don't know. <laughs> well, you know, I, I have, I have my friends, you know, it, everybody knows my, my bestie is Tracy Moreau and my, and then I have Sandy McTeer as well. So the three of us are totally different in how we do everything. Tracy's designs are drawn out to the T before she paints. Sandy does not draw out her. She just puts it all out and creates a design and then designs off of that. I start off with sort of a basic shape. So I'll, I'll think to myself, I'll look at a piece of surface and I know what I think would be on it. Those are the best ones. When a surface sort of says, look at me, I'm a snowman or look at me, I'm an angel, I'm doing this. And so it starts with a shape, but then it builds off of that because I hate blank spaces. So then I start doing strange things like you know, frogs in pockets on Halloween ones. And, and just the, my elements and bits just keep getting at it as it, as it goes along until I figure I've done enough. So cool. Stop. <laughs> Brings us to the question when um, Julie's asking any Halloween designs coming up? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> it's my favorite. Halloween is actually Halloween and, and winter. Snowman Halloween and stuff are, and are my favorites. So yes, Julie, keep I know Julie loves out. Halloween. Hmm? Keep an eye out for that, right? She yeah. Goes, Yay. <laughs> yes. Um, what is your favorite medium? Acrylic. But you know, it's changed. I'm, I've been always been into acrylics. I like the way they move. I've dabbled with, you know, the, the, the heavier bodied acrylics and I quite, I quite like them. I did oils years ago. I don't like the smell. So I don't like working in something that is hard to clean up. But I've sort of, with, with the pandemic and, and supplies being sort of harder to get, and of course in Canada, they're worse. So if you think you got problems, come up to Canada, you can't get it, you have to order it and it's, it's tricky. So I started dabbling, but I, I fell in love with the Decwarts media line, the fluid acrylics and the transparency of them all. And uh, that kind of leads on to sort of my new, my new adventures that I've been into, but acrylics. So the difference between the like deco art Americana and the fluid acrylics media line is the the of course our flu our regular acrylics they're all like they're base paint so they're like a white base in most cases you know they're they're opaque the fluid acrylics are pure pigment so they remain transparent whether you do them full strength or water them down they they stay transparent if you take say your favorite say take something like a cinnamon drop or something it's a nice bright red and it it but it's still it's going to be and it does have a transparency level to it because it is not as full of a base of white as as the white base paints less filler in it so when you paint with say cinnamon drop it has a transparency multi coats right but if you water it down it loses that vibrancy that it would have of being the pure red and of course you need something underneath to get that pure red you take one of the, the reds in the fluid acrylic line and you add a bunch of water to it it doesn't lose that vibrancy 
So you're not, you're, you're removing pigment almost by like there's technical terms. I'm not as technical on the aspect as some of the others are, but it, it remains, it stays transparent. And that's why I use it for a lot of what I do now moving forward. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Cool. I like seeing what a product will do that it's probably not meant to do. <laughs> what do you mean it's for this? Let's use it for that. Okay. <laughs> But you oh. like to play and that's good because we need yeah. people like you that like to play because then you go and find out what the product mm -hmm. will do you know and uh that's maybe fun. even the manufacturers didn't know that you could do it with it well I, I do i do have to have a, a the nice wonderful pleasure of being on 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 part of the deco arts team of uh i forget what they call us but I, I I do have a like I'm I'm on a team with Deckwart, so I get to give them a lot more feedback than say the average general public does. Not that they listen, no, they don't always listen. But I do I do have the ability to speak out. So yeah, I hear what yeah. you're saying. They're very good. They're very good people. So do you have a favorite technique? Is like the one you're working on now is is that your favorite technique floating the f word Ooh. yeah i'll float anything i i love floating i love my my angle shaders i will float if you know people that do paint my designs i float everything two three times so there's a they my designs might look simple but every step has a base coat shade highlight sometimes a dry brush and then a deeper shade and a brighter highlight so all those steps go into each and every element of most of my designs so when you float it is the water retained in your brush and then you pick up paint or is yeah. the water how is that okay I, I blot some of it off so i've got my favorite brushes for that and i've got my you know it's just one of those things you just do repetitious you just keep doing it and doing it and doing it and eventually it uh becomes second nature so i do it all the time everything i do is float so it's, it's, I just love to do it. And I like, you know, I've been working on it over years. I love how it creates <laughs> different looks. And then people are going, oh my God, I hate floating. Most people do. That's not one of the words that they want to hear. My F word is flowers. So I got my F words. There you go. There you <laughs> floating go. and flowers. Um, what, and you just said now, is the angle brush your favorite brush? The angle is my favorite. I do most of my floating and even write quite wide floats with a 3 8 angle shader. I use a half inch every now and then, but you know, everything I can do wide floats and I can do little tiny floats with my three eighths angle shader. And and you have a, a specific brand that you prefer over others? Oh, absolutely. I love my Dynasty Black Gold brushes. They are, I've used them for a long, I used to be a person that used um, Low Cornell years and years and years ago. And I had my favorite brushes. And that's before they were sent overseas to be made. So they, the quality changed when, when they went overseas to be made. It was about that time that I met, I met Fred with Dynasty Brush, Fred Mink, wonderful man. And he turned me on to doing some of the, the black gold. So I thought, you know, I'm going to give these a try. So I took all my brushes that I had that I could no longer get quality ones with, put them where I could see them. And I put all my black golds in front of me and I just kept using them. And then I started finding my favorites. And that's been, oh my gosh, that's been like, nine years 10 years maybe so they make the dynasty brushes here in the u.s mm -hmm. yeah a lot of their brushes are made in the u.s i like those and i have uh, i like the, i love the full swirls i use them quite often for the media line because they hold that little bit more water okay that's good to know and they last a long time like i i am a very abusive with my brushes i do the no-nos i leave them in water and everything but I, I can use the same angle shader for like six to eight months, sometimes a year. And then there's nothing left on one side. <laughs> you don't want to see that. And then I'll kill it and then I'll send them a picture. Go, I killed it. <laughs> they'll send you a new one. <laughs> I have a stash. Yeah. So this leads me to like what you're doing today with your, um, when did you start to work with Sam Pendis? When did that collaboration begin? And how did well, that, that that's kind of an interesting story, actually, because it all starts with me tripping right in front of their booth and doing a place plant right at Lori Speltz's feet, and then trying to pop up like all nonchalant, like I didn't hurt myself. 
And so I, kind of, I knew the stamps, I had shopped the booth, but I didn't spend a lot of time talking to them. And back when Debbie Cole was with Stamp Panda, so I had met, like I'd been in the booth, I'd met Peggy a couple of times and stuff. So anyway, after I sort of made my entrance with them, I think it was the next year or something, they were gonna be in Anaheim or not Anaheim, Phoenix for the Creativation AFCI show. And they, they needed somebody that would do stamps and the mixed media stuff. And so they had asked, uh, who was it? I think Tracy Weinzaffel was going to work with them. And then she got called over to Deckwork with all the, the big launch of the media lines and things like that. So they had an opening. So they phoned Tracy. Well, Tracy was busy because she was working with Deckwork. They said, how about Deb? And they said, oh, we know her. <laughs> So they called me and then, and then, so yeah, they, I went and I went down to Phoenix and I worked their booth and it was love at first sight for all of us. And it's been many years since. So it just, they wanted somebody that would paint their stamps and, and sort of move them in a different direction. And I know that that was something years ago when Debbie Cole worked with them, that was sort of one of Debbie Cole and, and Tammy, uh, Tammy Wilson did as well as they painted with the stamps. So they were kind of without anybody. And I just fell in their lap. And, and then working with the deco art media uh, fluid acrylics really seemed like a perfect. Oh, plan. it was a it was a match made in heaven. There is not, you know, not not to, to preach their product or anything, but it is there is nothing on the market that is like it, which is uh, the frustration right now with with the limitations of getting the product. But it is with the transparency, the ability to layer colors without them bleeding together and matte medium will seal your layers in between so you can continuously build layers. And it, it just started creating this really interesting projects and a great relationship. So I've, they've, they've lugged me everywhere. I have taught scrapbook stores in, in uh, at, at the Creative Asian show. I've also done uh, the Tom Collins, Tim Collins. I always think Tom Collins, because that's a drink, right? You put it in alcohol. Yeah, just because I don't drink doesn't mean I don't know how. <laughs> But Tim Collins' event is is they they a lot of the 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 um, many like resellers in the paper and craft industry are under this banner of this Tim Collins. So he hosts the events and these events. One year I went to Phoenix with, or or to Vegas in the summertime, and I so I have all these scrapbook stores that have never painted. So it's kind of this challenge. And of course they put me right out there in front of all these people and said, "Here, teach them how to paint." So I I would be given a project and it went so well. We just had so much fun. And so we've had a great relationship. They send me all their latest and greatest before they're made available to the public. And I do samples and all the ad pieces for the painting magazines. And do you have and, a few there to show us? You want to see? Yes, want please. Some of my examples. So this is this is this is one of my newest ones. These stamps are not available yet. Where's my? There it is. Make a little bear. So this is one of these cute little uh, candle holders from. Uh, uh, Sheila Landry. So I just did all these little guys. And these ones actually are painted with the regular acrylics because I, I forced myself to, to sort of come up with a color theme, color palette that would work. So this is one. Now the stamps you stamped right onto the, is that wood? Yeah, the process basically is, is I gesso everything because I start with a white base. So I gesso everything. Then I put a coat of white paint over top, white or warm white, but I'm, I had all this white and then I ran out of white and Tracy sent me white. And uh, so I use several coat, couple of coats of white and then I stamp them. And then I will put a coat of matte medium over top to seal, seal the stamps, seal the background. And then I start doing my layers and I float them all. Or I use my little, this is a, a little Dynasty IPC brush. It's a little fun little brush. And I actually do it where I pick up the paint, but I rouge it like it's, it's almost, almost it's almost like a little wash oh. and you can color with it. If you load it right, which I've got videos on, you can color with it like a marker and then you can do your shading over top. And let's see, oh, I just finished this one. This is one I just finished. It's so beautiful. So this one uses their wood grain stamp as well. So I created the wood grain look in the background. And okay, they're all over the place. Oh, this one. So this is where I've started doing is where I'll do my own doodle. So this, the witch is my, my design, but these stamps are stamp appendices. My, I'm backwards. 
but no, so you're not, you're not backwards to us so that is I'm backwards to me so i'm going eh, going the wrong way. awesome so she's kind of fun she's like my little masked witch and let's see and this one here we go this one's called cute as a button so this is sort of how i've taken it to the next level of going from just painting little samples to creating projects with it so this is a sort of a, a mixture of stamps and and or so, the decor fluid acrylics and regular so each one of those flowers is that a different stamp mm -hmm. that's called the button blossoms uh oh and it's it's uh so i actually sell kits for them now so you can get everything in one with you know even right down to the a little piece of sorrel paper which is good for transferring because when you're going to use pens so what what i do is i i started having the hashtag on instagram when i started posting posting them all as i call it sketch stamp ink and paint so i'll sketch a design then i'll stamp images and then i'll i'll ink in the rest with an identi pen and uh then so it, it becomes cohesive so it looks like it's all all intermixed and then i just start doing my layers of painting cool so fun. it's very relaxing actually and then i have here's one i was playing with this was a challenge to myself this one actually is with tombow markers painting with tombow markers because i like a watercolor so trying different different methods to do it because you get the same look and it's very affordable so i'm you know the tombow markers but i think that's that's a medium that also requires uh some getting used to how to manipulate them right i mean it is you know and i've been playing i've been dabbling a lot in different um kind of different little pieces i've thrown out a lot of pieces but i've come to the conclusion that I've created it to, I decide, you know what, why am I trying to paint like watercolor with it? Why don't I paint like I do with, with um, the fluid acrylic? So I use my little, my little brush and then my angle shaders for floating. And the nice thing about the Tombow markers, as opposed to when you can't get the paint, is it's affordable to buy a little package at Michael's or Hobby Lobby or even on their website. I mean, they're amazing, but it gives you that same transparency and that same look and the same vibrancy with without a lot of money and when you use the papers and stuff even though they say it's water soluble and it reacts with water which it will if you start putting mediums over top like matte mediums and varnishes but it dries quick enough that you can put another layer on without them turning into like a, a muddy looking mess that's pretty so, cool yeah, we're doing a project coming up where i'm playing with those i'm playing with all different methods of painting and doodling and that's fun stuff, stuff really exciting charlene says love 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 my stamping and tombow markers on hot press watercolor paper yes they're very nice on there especially if you don't want a lot of blending of the two colors to go together i find it just in mixed media paper you can move it a lot and it keeps moving whereas i find the watercolor paper you they blend together if you're quick but you don't get all that constant movement ah okay cool. so fun so oh, and I'm working on little mugs. I'm working on little mugs. Is that so this is sort of the process when we start working. These are two of the new ones. Where am I going? There you go. Oh, cute. So I, I do beautiful. painting like the normal painting process. It's nothing different. We're not doing anything really weird. Have you ever used the Arteza watercolor markers? Not yet. No. Okay. I hear they're quite good, though. Yeah, Jessica says she just bought some and she's hoping that they work as well as the Tombos. They're supposed to if they're water soluble, they should. I just yep. think it's fun to open your mind, you open your mind up to trying different mediums. You know, why frustrate yourself, right? Right. Uh, Julie is saying she she needs those mugs. <laughs> <laughs> those mugs are new. I got them cut at my little my little place the other day, but cool. Julie can't have them yet. She has to wait like everybody else. Okay. <laughs> what what is your best tip that you would give a student? Do you have any tips? <laughs> you know, everybody gets stunned at that. It's like you, you know. Yet what when you when you teach a class, you you as a I, teacher are full of tips, and then all of a sudden you get asked, you're like, "What?" I I do, you know. And my 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 biggest thing is take my tips to anybody who wants to paint is is learn from as many people as you possibly can. Nobody's technique is 
is definitely necessarily the only technique or the right technique. There is really no, unless you want to go into like the old styles of rose modeling and so forth, there's a real hardcore technique that you want to learn. You want to learn those techniques because they will, they will um, help you moving forward to be freer with your art. Like even taking one stroke painting, which I took, I, I, I cried at the, at the roses. I tossed it all away and I cried. I literally did, but, <laughs> but the leaves, just the motion and the stuff that you learn, but I'll never be afraid to try and never be afraid to make mistakes. Just, and, and you know what? I firmly believe with, with my students and in my classes, we're all different. We have a heavier hand, we have a lighter hand. Some of us, you know, like my mom, we're so numeric, everything in a row. Other people are like all out there. I kind of in between gray. Um, but, you know, if I, I like people who come away with it at the end of the day, and if they like what they've got on their project, that makes me happy. You know, there's no right or wrong. Whatever makes you happy. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, is there a medium, a technique, or a subject that you haven't tried yet that you'd like to try? Watercolor. I don't even have to think about that. I am obsessed with watercolor in the in the way of um, not the not the total abstract, but the real watery, washy look, like not the structured painting, you know, where you can't tell if it's watercolor or not. I love that real colorful and, and just wild, but controlled. Everything within with me, I still have to have that control, right? But a watercolor is where I want to go. I just love it. I've been I've been studying it for years, haven't acquired it. No. <laughs> well, it's, you have to you have to focus on it. Like you have to put all your toys away. And get, I mean, I've got full set of Daniel Smith. I love her watercolors. I've got watercolors and a million other brands. I've got colored pencils, both Prismacolor and <laughs> Faber Castell, which I just love. But yeah, watercolor I think is where is probably my go-to for yourself. Or yeah. like you're learning for, me, for my go to for me to really run it want to get a hold of the, the so movement like of when you paint. go to a convention, do you get time to take a class and, and would it be watercolor or is it if, if, if the right watercolor was there like I did look when I at the last two conventions I went the right watercolor for me wasn't there what I'd wanted to learn. But uh, oh yeah if there was the right, the right one there, I would take it in a heartbeat I would book it beforehand to say I'm not available during this time. Cool. So Julie is asking, will you do a watercolor class in the future? Julie, I have to learn how first. Julie does know um, she's um, the, my little group that I've created so I, that I can share all my wild and wacky creations and hopefully people will share them as well. It's just a place I created a little group online where we can play with all these different things. So the one is the Tombow markers we'll be playing with, which is a form of watercolor. So we'll be playing. Oh, I'm going to share my journey with people and hopefully, you know, but I thought best to like not splash it all out there in front of God and everybody, I would kind of put it in a little group and. <laughs> well, you have a test group. <laughs> yeah, they're my, they don't know it groups. yet, but they're my guinea pigs. Yeah, they they're your test group. yeah. They just, they just think they're there because they're going to get really cool stuff, but no, no, they're guinea pigs. <laughs> You're right. I love them all. <laughs> So you showed us a lot of beautiful projects. Uh, do you happen to have the one there that you're doing for our full webinars? I do. Which one would you like to see? All of them. <laughs> I have two. Hang on. Okay. So the classes I've got which way first. Okay, so first off, I think is coming is the Friday, the Friday one, the Friday, the, the, the free one, the that's demo. A, yeah, that's a demo piece that's going to be this Friday at 7pm Eastern. Yeah. And this one will touch on creating sort of a funky background to how to put the, the project on the background. There's very little painting, even though it's just solid painting. But and then I'm going to show you how to do some doodles. So we'll get as much done. The doodling is something that, you know, we, we go off and do in front of the TV later with our pens and stuff. But I'll show you a lot of my techniques. So, and it's, she's very simple, simple eyes, just, but it's just sort of some fun stuff to play with. 
I didn't want to go too much into the stamp and doodle bit to scare people off. Mm -hmm. But it does give you a chance to sort of do what we normally do and then step outside that comfort zone a bit. And then coming up, of course, is we're going to the beach. Yep, that's on August 1st. That's August 1st. I love the colors. Don't you love his little toes? Look at He's got oh, little tiny toes. Look at, they're so cute. He's wearing his Birkenstocks. I he's love Birkenstocks. His Birken, and he's got his cool shades on. And he needs a name. We'd uh, have to name him during class and then give a demo. And this, yeah, this one. That one. He has, he, we don't have a date for him just yet, but he is in the uh, queue. Well, I have, I do have a date. Do you? Yeah, September 12th. Oh, okay. September 12th. This yeah. one. And this is all my basic every day. This is everything I do all the time on a daily basis. Float, shade, dry brush, highlight, add little things. I love the colors on that too. And I love the dark background because it really makes the whole design pop. It does, you know, and I did it and then I realized I had no black left and I couldn't get it anywhere. So I thought I can't do any more black pieces until I get some black. So um, Marie's asking, is the pattern for the angel, is there a pattern for the angel? Yeah, there is a pattern pack online and it does ask for, like I do, I do carry the stamps on my website as well. Unfortunately, they won't ship in time right now, but you can pick up anything um, to create the background with. It doesn't have to be feathers um, and the little hope stamp, you know, if you wanted to order that and pick it up and have it come and add it later, it's so easy, it's paper. But I do have uh, the e-pattern, I think it's $5. I didn't, I didn't mark it up to anything grand, I don't think. And um, what's nice is that the Facebook will, like they're doing right now, mm -hmm. recording our interview, they'll record yeah. the lesson, the demo. So you'll be able to order your things and get them when you get them and you'll have come back and watch the video. Yeah. And, and do it with Debbie on video. <laughs> <laughs> you can watch me twice. There you go. <laughs> Um, How much fun would that be? We're just hoping that, oh my, I'm just hoping my air conditioner comes before then. Oh dear. I hope so too. Mm -hmm. or I hope that the, the weather breaks and you don't have to use the AC. Um, no, that's not going to happen. No. Not here, not this summer. No, unless we're, unless we're on fire and I get evacuated. That's, oh, I hope not. I hope not. That's a no. We, they're actually, ha they're asking us to have go bags now. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. Just because it's so dry and brittle that the fires will move so quickly if we get them. And mostly, I think not that my house will burn down, but for the planes and the electrical and all that stuff. So yeah, that is so scary. Don't know where we'll go, but we'll go to Washington. <laughs> In, is the border 20, 20 open? minutes away? Are hmm? the open? No. no, no, not only for air travel, not for not for cars, unless un, unless you are a resident or double vaccinated. Now I think you can. They just opened at midnight last night, so there's. I think our our Canadian residents can come home. So there's people's spouses can come home now. Oh, okay, oh, that's yeah. nice, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, Jessica says I'll send you some of our cold here in Maine. <laughs> it's like no thanks. <laughs> no, the cold. You want you want cooler weather. No, I don't want colder. Today is gloomy. Today the, the haze is blocking the sun. I know the sky is blue up there, but you know what? I'll take it because it was just it even though it's still like, well, 30 Celsius, so it's still in the nineties, right. but it is not that intense heat. Okay, cool. Um, you can video from the pool, Marianne says. <laughs> well, you know, I, I tell people sometimes if I disappear, I'm in the pool. Marianne knows. <laughs> You're in the pool. Kathy says, I've never painted with you, which class would be good to start with? Which class would be good to start with? What does she normally paint? I have no idea, but I would say start with any of them because any of them might, you know, my, I teach my techniques and, and they're, they're basic techniques, they're base coat, shade, highlight. So I do a lot of floating and I'll show you how to float. And it's just repetition of the same products yeah. over same, same things over and over again. Right. So yeah. yeah and, and the beards, if we do the little, if we do the gnome, oh my gosh, you'll love the beard is so easy. And I do have the brush sets now for the beards. I do carry them. Oh, cool. So Debbie, Debbie James saying, better get a trailer for the art supplies. <laughs> you know, the, the, I do carry like a lot of my, my favorite product online. Of course, I carry all the stamp and the stamps now as well. So I want to point out, even though my, my store is, I am Canadian and I'm shipping from Canada, it is actually cheaper for me to ship to the U.S. to you guys than it is for you guys to ship to me. 
I, that is crazy, isn't it? It costs me more to ship in Canada than it does to ship to the States. So don't, don't, and I, my, all my pricing is in US dollars. So if, if there's anything you want, I'm shipping away. Yeah, that is crazy for us to ship to Canada. I know. I'm, I know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've been there, done that. So where, where else are you teaching other than for, for art for webinars? Are you teaching? I am, I am teaching that cute as a button for the white mountain decorative painters. So this one is coming up uh, sometime this month. I'd have to check, but yeah, she's coming up this month and, and that's on zoom for well. you. That's what, it's all on my website. Everything is there. No, I'm saying that the class is on Zoom as well. So you can yes. go to White Mountain Decorative Painter, Decorative Painting Painters Guild. Ah, yeah, I was the president twice. And you think I, I, I should be able that. to roll that off my tongue, but I'm not. You should know that stuff by now. I was going to show you. And oh. my other is my, my first free live that I'm attempting to do. So I've got my guinea pigs are all there for my first free live which is what I call my, my pedal boot stamp and doodle, this guy. So this I am doing on coming up this weekend, I think. So I show you how we're going to, we're going to create him, her. So my girls, but she has stamped boots. So if, if you want yours to have feet, you need a stamp, but this is what we're going to play with all over on my group. So that's the type of stuff I'm going to do. It's, 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 you know, it's just, we're going to just play and have some fun. And so there'll be I, stuff over there. So you give them a line drawing and then they, they, get a, they yep, choose they get the a, colors themselves and stuff? Well, we're, we're the, the first live is basically to show the technique. So my stamp and doodle technique. And so they get the line drawing. The kit comes with um, Sorrel paper because if you use regular graphite paper, it doesn't erase. But it also has a wax. It has a waxy coating on it. So when you trace over with your pen, your pen starts to pick up that wax and then your pen starts to run out ink. So. I sell a kit right now that has the Identibrush, a little piece of Sorrel, the stamp, and the printed line drawings. So, and then we're going to explore different methods of painting. We're going to show you, we're going to paint, like I've got three of them on the go, but we'll play with some Tombow markers and we'll play with some um, acrylics and some fluid acrylics and, and, or for people just want to do the doodles. So show you all sorts of different types of doodles and see what people create. What's the medium that you're going to be using for a Friday's demo? Our regular acrylics, deck water okay. acrylics. So yeah. maybe maybe we could talk you into doing a Tombow uh, demo for us someday. Sure, absolutely. Oh, I'd love to. Yeah, you know, I love playing with new things and finding new things, and I think you know, there's there's so many different directions that we can go. And the way I look at it is, I've got patterns galore, right? I've got some of my favorites that, that are, are, they've been around for so long. So what I'll do is I'll draw them out in my journal and I'll just ink them and start creating doodles with them and, or maybe add some stamps, but you can, you can use what you have. You don't have to go out and buy a ton of stuff. That's yeah, that's really cool. And I have a ton of stuff. It's just, I don't know how to use them. So that intimidates me and yeah. not using them, you know? Well, I haven't seen anybody using the Tombows like I am just yet. So, you know, I'm just, playing and I'm getting a really unique look and I'm doing it on paper and I can do it on on painted surfaces as well I'm, I'm playing around with that like on a gesso and painted surface it's just how it moves and how it dries because you can't add other mediums over top but you can definitely create projects very quickly that look painted so and we're still doing the painting technique with the shading and that little brush you were showing us that yeah. you love to use is that hairs well. or is that sponge no it's it's hairs let me see if i can get it where's my thing okay it's, it's just a it's this hairs and this is actually called a, a small point blender it's an ipc brush i carry them in a set because they're great for i do them all my stamp painting so it comes with uh the small point blender um it's like a mop. dry brush with it oh it does the best dry brushing oh yeah okay. and i rouge with it so what i have there's a video on my website go to my YouTube channel and I've got a couple of videos where I where I am using these brushes and how I use them. So I load them up and I, I treat them so they're like a marker once they're loaded. And so I'll just kind of work on, let me see, where do I got? So I'll just pretend I go to color and backwards and I'll, I'll load it, but I'll color sideways and just kind of rouge it on to, and I get like a base coat or I also stipple with it. 
if I want to build up texture. And they're great. This is great for cheeks when you do your little dry little cheeks and stuff as well. So yeah. it, it's a great brush. It's multi, but it's actually ink, ink, uh, pen and chalk. It's multiple, multi use. Cool. But I package it with a little mop and a three eighths angular shade, angle, angular shader, because I don't like my brushes mixing mediums. I keep are my you, black golds. Are you going to be using that brush on Friday in the demo? No. Okay. Well, we'll have to add another demo on how to use that brush properly. <laughs> well, you know, I'll be using that brush with the Tombow markers, actually. Oh, awesome. I, I yeah. really, I really want to see that. I think it would be, you really know, fun. when you work, when you, when you kind of like an ambassador for dynasty brush, the last thing you want to do is show up with a water filled brush. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, I was like, I'm sure I can make, I can find a way to make this work. And so, you know, I, I go and I get like every brush I own and I start playing with them to try to figure out what will give me. Hold on. Hi guys. Oh, Hi. what do I do, Cindy? <laughs> um, well, we can end the video or oh, you hold can- Hold on guys, hold on one oh, second. Oh, oh, oh. Right, we can, we'll call you back. We'll okay, back. you call okay. me back in a couple, I'll call you. You call me, Love Okay, you, bye. <laughs> oh my, oh God. my God, my grand boys. They're adorable. They were uh, supposed to be here. They were supposed to be here, but my seven-year-old grandson ended up with COVID. Oh, is he okay? He's doing okay, yeah. Okay. Did he get it vaccinated? No, he's only seven. Both parents are double vaccinated. He got it in day camp, of all things, after all the precautions and everything. And he goes to a small community day camp. And yeah, yeah. the well, day before yeah. they're supposed to drive out here, he gets COVID. Oh, wow. wow. It's, wow. it's the mandatory phone call where they have to phone and thank grandma for the goodie box. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so I sent them new Lego today. So I felt bad. I said, I right, send them some Lego. Yeah. Well, now they have to phone and go, thank you, grandma. Hopefully he recovers without any repercussions. So I hope so. That's the, it's the unknown. That's the scary um, part. But Julie's asking about, will you be back to Palooza in 2022? Maybe. Okay. Maybe, um, maybe, maybe. Uh, not this year for sure, because it, it's the, the cost of flying is like four times what it was. And it's, it's outrageous. Like, like six airports. It's crazy. It's, I can't do it. Maybe um, next year. Kathy's mm -hmm. asking, is the known class full? And I, she can't find it. So Kathy, look under, um, look under, I think it's under painting. Of course, I don't know. My daughter takes care of that now. So I have no idea. If she goes to my website on under Zoom classes, the link should take her right to it. Oh, there you go. It should. It should. It should. It, you know, the computers, I, a love-hate relationship. You know what I'm saying? Right. I don't think it's full, but... If worse comes to worse, you can always contact support at artfulwebinars.com and um, or go to Deb's e uh, website and yeah. we'll we'll get you hooked up. Um, let's see, Sandy Sandra is asking, what is your background color on cute as a button? We're gonna make that. Uh -huh. <laughs> there you go. There yeah. is no. Um, it's it's a mixture of of a bunch of colors mixed with white. And that's what we're doing in the Zoom class. So after the Zoom class, I'll probably have a more detailed pattern packet available for people. So um, let's see, the next question was Cheryl. Um, so what is your group? So the, the group that she, which group, I guess, because then my group on her, little, her little group. Yeah, am I allowed to say? Sure. <laughs> uh, Stamp and Doodle with Deb. Stamp and doodle with Deb. Yeah, and, and I do have to approve and, everybody. Yeah, not stamp in, stamp and doodle. With stamp Deb. and doodle with Deb. Okay. And uh, it's fairly new, so this is my first my first event to excellent. play. Excellent. Well, it's just a place to play. Hey, it's going to be fun. I know you're going to do yeah. well. I just wanted a place to share fun things that weren't cluttering up my website from or my Facebook page from what its primary purpose was. Right, right. Okay, Marian, are tumble markers watercolor markers or alcohol? Yeah, watercolor ones. Okay, um, let's see. Julie wants, I won that brush from you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> okay, so Charlene says both. They have one line that is water based and one line that's alcohol based. So, okay. Yes, it's so a water based line. Yeah, be careful when you're ordering, right? 
Yeah, and they actually their their website is really good. Like if you order over a certain amount, you get free shipping and everything. So and it comes like in three days. I was shocked. Cool. So I and I that's the other thing. I bought a bunch of alcohol uh, ink markers, whatever. And I have I, I, I don't know if you can see from here, but right directly behind me is there's my stash of all my other markers, and we won't talk about what's in the drawers. So um, my my last questions are: How can people find you, and where can they purchase your books and patterns? And so everything is at painting with deb.com so you can go there and find more artwork from deb and uh order your paintbrush kits and all that other fun stuff right yeah lots of stuff and and uh the new stamps from the new release the july release has all the new christmas and winter stamps which are super duper cute super and duper super duper cute and Here's um Miriam was asking if you have an affiliate link for Tombow. No, I'm not connected with them in any way, shape, or form. It's just a product I thought I would I would try and play with. So, um, well, thank you so much for this wonderful thank you so hour. Much. Can you believe the hour has already gone by? Wow. <laughs> so thank you so much. Well, thanks for, for having me. No, I'm really joining. excited. Everybody, remember, you got to come back on Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern oh, yeah. and watch her demo. And you can ask questions then as well. And I can translate the questions for you mm. so that uh, that you can get your answers and play with Deb. If you want to, you can order that pattern from her website as well. And stay tuned for a lot more fun this month. We have uh, other... Uh, other than ARPA webinars, webinars, we also have a lot of events, free events happening. Meet the artist and paint, uh, watch, learn and paint or pencil or chalk or God knows we have so much going on. Make cards with us, whatever. So check out the events in the group. But thank you all so much. Thank you, Deb, for being here. Thank Thanks you, for everyone. having me. It was a lot of fun. Have a <laughs> wonderful week and we'll see you all Friday, yep. right? See you on Friday. Absolutely. You betcha. <laughs>